Good morning. This is Bobby Bull with the Production Support Office and the Office of Design. Thank you for joining us for the concurrent PD&E and Design Phase Scoping Webinar. Uh, just a couple things before we get into it. Today's broadcast will be recorded. In a couple of weeks, we'll be having it posted on the Scope of Services webpage. This will also be in Learning Curve. We also intend on getting the PDF out to all the attendees of today's webinar. And this will, information will also be posted within Learning Curve. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can enter them into the uh, question box, and we will be having uh, our panelists uh, work on those questions for you throughout the presentation. If we need to, we will also have a Q&A session after Victor is done with this presentation. Reminder, there are no PDHs associated with this uh, webinar, so uh, we will not be doing anything, issuing anything after this uh, course. So now we'll go ahead and get into our webinar. Today's speaker will be Victor Mucharuzzo. He is the supervisor of the engineering and review section of the Office of Environmental Management. He's responsible for the development of procedures and guidance related to pd and &E studies. Prior to joining FDOT, Victor worked on numerous transportation projects in the private sector. So for that, we'll hand it over to Victor. Thank you, Bobby Bull. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, having a lot of information regarding uh, developing scope of services for projects that have a concurrent pd &E phase and design phase. So the purpose of the training is uh, uh, teaching you how to create the scope of services for projects with concurrent pd &E and design phases, where both phases are procured in one contract. So the emphasis there is uh, one contract has both uh, pd &E and design. Outline of the training today, uh, we're going to start with uh, talking more about a project delivery process for concurrent phases, and the concurrent phases are design and pd &E. Then we're going to be jumping on how we created the standard scope of services for concurrent pd &E design, hoping that uh, if you understand how we create the standard scope of services for these concurrent phases, you will be able to develop a, a scope of services for your project, which has two both, both phases combined. Then we're going to be, be moving over, uh, talking about uh, staff hour estimates and uh, staff hour um, estimation guidelines. How did we update them? And the forms also were updated. And then lastly, we're going to be talking a little bit, a little bit about the tools and guidance that we prepare to help you develop the scope of services for concurrent phases. So before we dive into um, materials we are presenting, we want to make sure that you understand what is uh, concurrent phases. So concurrent phases means, in this context, both pd &E and design phases are procured in one contract. That is, you'll have one contract with both pd &E study and design services. Concurrent phases also mean combined phases. pd &E study is combined with design services, again, in one contract. What concurrent phase is, is not a pd &E study with an option for design services. Most of you, if not a lot of you, have been doing pd &E study with an option for design services for many years. But this standard scope of services, which we're going to be presenting today, is not pd &E study with an option for design services. So now we've been doing this for many years. Uh, outline of the traditional project development process, focusing on a pre-construction process. You start from uh, planning and programming of your project, and then we do more of our environmental uh, screening through ETDM screening, EST2. We use the information from planning and ETDM screening to score PD&E study. And then we advertise uh, to acquire the consultant who is going to be doing PD&E study. Then we move into the PD&E phase where we clear the environment. The end goal is approval of our pd &E study by uh, accepting location design concept approval. And then uh, we use pd &E study 
approval to scope design phase of that project and then we advertise the project we select the consultant and then the consultant do design and if uh, there are new right away required the lateral phase can be um, procured or start somewhere after 60 percent design plan and then after that the project will go to construction so if you look at this process, all the phases are completed in series. What we realize that um, there are some pd &E activities that are repeated during design, and also there are some pd &E activities that should have been done in planning, so there's some repetition also in this process. And the concurrent process is gonna be looking like what is displayed here in the screen. So we've moved the pd &E and combined with uh, design. We're gonna be doing both pd &E study and design services together. So we're gonna be using the information from planning and ETDM screening to scope the project and then advertise and procure the consultant who will be able to do both pd &E and design. And after the pd &E is approved, that's when right away phase will be will start. Again, under this um, um, contract, pd &E and design will be performed concurrently in order to accelerate project delivery. However, following this process, there are some risks that uh, you should be aware of. There are some risks related to the scope. If you did not scope it very well, probably you're not going to be successful in this project. The schedule also, how you're gonna be able to line up activities to support uh, a NEPA approval, as well as uh, design plans for your project. And also the cost. If you don't do very well on scope and schedule, ultimately you have some issues with, this, with, this, with the cost. So one condition to perform concurrent phases is that both phases, PD&E and design, must be funded concurrently in the same year. So by the time you program your project, you have to program both PD&E and design together. Also, the caveat of that, which is a big requirement, I'm going to be emphasis this requirement later, is that the final design activities, which is preparation of phase three and phase four design plan will not start until NEPA is clear. A question, does, does FHWA allow concurrent phases in the project delivery process? The answer is yes, FHWA allow concurrent phases as supported by Everyday Count Initiative and SHARP2 program. This also has been allowed by FHWA's policy on permissible project-related activities during NEPA process, which was uh, released under FHW Order 6640.18. And also concurrent pd &E and design are allowed under Title 23, Code of Federal Register, Section 771.113A, which is the timing of NEPA approval. In terms of funding, uh, we don't have any problem there from our FHWA uh, perspective because both pd &E and design are funded by preliminary engineering fund. Preliminary design activities can be performed concurrent with NEPA. That's what FHWA say. However, final design activities must not proceed until NEPA has been approved. So if you look into detail to Title 23 of Code of Federal Register, Section 771-113, it states that the lead agencies in cooperation with an applicant and project sponsor as appropriate will perform work necessary to complete environmental review process, which is pd &E. This work includes drafting environmental documents and complete environmental study related engineering studies, agents coordination, public involvement, and the identification of mitigation measures, except as otherwise provided in law or in paragraph B of this section. And that's section 
section is 771.113. Then final design activities, property acquisition, purchase of or construction material or rolling stock or project construction must not proceed until the following has been completed. Number one, administration as classified as a CE, which is categorical exclusion, a FONSI, finding of no significant impact from EA, or administration has issued the combined final EIS road or final EIS in the road. So these are the conditions which are regulated by FHWA and allow us to overlap pd and in design, but at the same time, prevent us from performing any final design activities before we create NIPA. So we have to stop <coughs> at around 60% plants or fiscal plants before uh, we can approve NIPA. So modification, you overlap pd and &E and design, and then when you complete your pd &E, your design should be about, or not more than phase two plants or 60% design plants. Everything which is being done before 60% uh, design plans will be preliminary design and everything after that will be final design activities. If you go further and read the definition of a preliminary engineering, no, preliminary design and final design are codified at uh, Title 23, Code of Federal Register, Section 636.103. They define final design as any design activities following preliminary design and expressly includes the preparation of final construction plans and detailed specification for performance of construction work. And the code also defined preliminary design as the general location and design concept, which includes but not limited to preliminary engineering and other activities and analysis supporting that. <clears throat> as most of you who are doing pd and &E, you'll know that the approval of a pd and &E is uh, granting the location and design concept approval. So the general project location design is related to preliminary design or preliminary engineering. And also uh, the engineering guiding document we pre prepare from pd &E is preliminary engineering report. Then FHWA order 6640.1A Direct the state DOT, FDOT in our case, and other contracting agencies that they may perform preliminary design activities prior to a NEPA decision regardless of the project delivery mechanism that is being used. However, final design activities may not advance until a NEPA decision has been issued. So emphasizing that you can combine design activities and NEPA, which is pd &E, but at the same time, you have to make sure that you're not continuing to prepare final design activities until pd &E is um, approved. So about four years ago, we met with FHWA talking about uh, their order <coughs> on a, a permissible uh, a preliminary engineering activity, and they looked at our table, which is a summary of phase submittals, and they told us that everything which has a P, which is preliminary, can be categorized as preliminary design activity. So from our table 301.21 from FDM, all these activities which have P are preliminary design activities and they can be combined with uh, pd &E study activity. Phase two or phase four plans are not uh, preliminary design activities. These are final design activities and they should not be combined with uh, pd &E. So we talk about uh, FHWA, which means that there are federal actions. What if we don't, we don't have federal action? <clears throat> if we don't have federal action, we prepare an environmental document called State Environmental Impact Report or SEER. With SEER, <clears throat> there is no limitation to the level of design plans which may be completed concurrently with uh, pd &E, which means that you can prepare a SEER with a uh, 100% uh, or a phase four plan. However, someone <clears throat> who is taking that decision has to consider risk associated with advancing final design activities 
to the SEER are specific if a federal permit is involved, because if a federal permit is involved, NEPA may be required. Contracting methods for PDN and design combined projects, there are always uh, four options that the district can procure, and central office does not dictate on one option or the other. The district has their decision to choose which option should be used in their project, depending on the context of their project and other funding mechanisms. So we're gonna to continue to have a standalone PDE study followed by a standalone design as we do in most of our projects now. Or the district can have a dual procurement of PDE and design phases. And this can be can be performed as one contract with PDE for PDE with an option for design, as some of the projects have been done right now. Or you can have two overlapping contracts, which means that you have one contract for PDE and another contract for design, and these contracts can be let simultaneously or they can be let in overlap. Some of the projects have this type of contract. Or now they can have an option to have one contract with both PDE and design when funded together. And then one contract with both PDE and design funded together is the purpose of this webinar. So when we advertise, when we advertise our combined PDE and design, we'll have one contract which will have both PDE group, which is 2.0, and design, which will be 3.2 or 4.2.2, etc. The contract agreement, scope of services, and schedule for these projects, uh, if there are federal actions must indicate that no final design activities will proceed beyond phase two plans without deep approval. So that's the condition that the consultant will need to know when they are negotiating the contract with uh, the department. What about um, uh, concurrent, concurrent phases in design and bid projects? So this exhibit here is going to show you how the uh, concurrent phases will work in the design bid project. As a matter of fact, the design bid project is also overlapping phases where you overlap uh, final design and uh, construction. We've been doing this uh, for many years now. So now you have an opportunity also of uh, overlapping PDE and uh, preliminary design and use that information to prepare your design builder RFP. Keep in mind that um, uh, you cannot proceed to final design without NEPA approval. <clears throat> the requirement of Title 23 Code of Federal Register, Section 606, must be met in all uh, design bid projects. Um, some of those requirements related to NEPA state design bid contracts must have a termination clause if the no bid alternative is selected after NEPA analysis, and also design bid firm must not prepare NEPA documents. So these requirements are not new. They are part of the design build boilerplate. What is new is that we can do PDE and design combined, and we can use that information to prepare RFP. So what are the benefits of um, um, performing design PDE concurrently? You hear a lot. Uh, streamline, streamline, accelerate the process. Uh, so <clears throat> we will streamline project activities in pre-construction phases. Identify issues, areas through cross-functional reviews, uh, either through scoping meetings or SWAT meetings, whatever you have. Eliminate redundancy or work of project activities, as I um, alluded when I started uh, showing the traditional process. And also we can eliminate irrelevant project uh, activities. So we're gonna be streamlining all these uh, project development activities. At the same time, we are not cutting corners. We will be meeting legal and regulatory requirements, some of the requirements I discussed earlier. So the next, uh, <clears throat> the next uh, presentation is um, regarding how we develop scope of services for projects with concurrent phases. While I'm going through uh, the slides, uh, you should be reminded by uh, the quote coming from Sh Shigeo Shingo, who used to be the chief of uh, Toyota production um, system. He said, the most dangerous kind of waste is the waste we don't know. 
So the need for standard scope of services for concurrent phases uh, started in about 2014 uh, through statewide acceleration transformation or SWAT initiative, where the department had contracted McKinsey uh, to look at our processes and recommend on the ways where we can do our projects more uh, efficiently. So one of the recommendations of a McKinsey study was uh, performing pd and &E and design phases concurrently. Similar efforts to streamline pd and &E design uh, were recommended by the District 4 as part of their SHARP 2 uh, C19 uh, grant, and also District 4 uh, did a value engineering um, for pd and &E process review and made similar recommendations. Additionally, um, FDOT has since completed several projects with uh, concurrent phases. These projects were coined as SWAT projects. However, <clears throat> in all those projects which were completed uh, with concurrent pd and and design phases, there were no standard scope of services for <clears throat> developing the scope for those projects. Why do we need some scope of services is guided by our own procedure, <clears throat> which states that both department consultant project managers will utilize uh, standard scope of services and software estimation guidelines in scoping and negotiating all consultant contracts for PDA studies and design services. So this work is in line with this procedure to make sure that um, uh, we create a, a standard where both the department and the consultant can use while they are negotiating their project. <clears throat> we had one goal, and uh, the goal was to prepare scope of services with design and pd &E study combined. <clears throat> so we we'll take scope of services for pd &E and add scope of services for design. We we'll create one combined scope, which has both pd &E study and design services combined. I want to emphasize here again, this is not a pd &E study with an option for design, which a lot of you are aware of that and have done that. So we're going to be creating a new thing, which is one scope with both pd &E study and design services combined. So these are the steps that we followed. We identify typical projects that may have a maximum benefit for combined phases. Keep in mind the risk, the risk which I mentioned area of the scope, schedule, and cost. <clears throat> we identify project activities that overlap pd and &E design. <clears throat> we wanted to keep or track both uh, pd and &E group as well as the design work types. We involved a special task team composed of uh, uh, FDOT districts and um, consultant, Association of Consulting Engineering Companies of Florida. Uh, they used to be called FIVE. And this team had both pd and &E and uh, design experience. We reviewed the scope language that overlapped and decided on appropriate location to scope either pd and &E or design. We revise and modify the language as appropriate, and also we revise staff our estimation guidelines, and also we revise staff our forms. So if you look at the overlapping activities, uh, this Venn diagram kind of like I show you um, how the activities um, overlap, which you combine both PD and design, and this is a list of activities that are overlapping. Public involvement, roadway analysis, drainage analysis, utility, evaluation, structure analysis, signalization, ITS, lighting, landscape, survey photogrammetry, ge geotechnical investigation, noise analysis, contamination, a lot of documentation. Which means that these activities are being done now in pd &E study and also are being done in design. So they are overlapping. So the most underlying question was, uh, in which phase should we effectively scope these activities? Now we know them. So to get to answer to that question, we review district scopes and other state processes that overlap pd and design. 
I'll stop here and say that um, this was the most daunting um, exercise. I uh, took a lot of our time to come to uh, decide where to scope uh, public involvement activities, where to scope a roadway and ice activities which overlap both pd &E and divine, such that those activities will support uh, development of roadway plans at the same time support development of um, the NEPA document, which means alternative analysis, uh, environmental impacts, as well as uh, uh, environmental uh, class of action documentation. This was the goal. <clears throat> so in doing that, as I said, it was a um, most daunting activity. It was very complicated. Uh, some of the uh, members in the team uh, could attest that. <clears throat> what we wanted is not to create a significant learning burden to practitioners, because if we complicate it, then uh, um, the standard scope is not going to be uh, usable. So we wanted to simplify the process. And also we learned from other stage processes that our pd and &E design. How do they um, streamline the environmental phase with the uh, design phase? So <clears throat> this was our approach. If you look at the pd and &E scope of services and the design scope of services, you realize that design has about 37 sections and pd and &E has seven sections. So it makes sense to maintain integrity of activities in the roadway standard scope of services, which has a lot of sections, and then take those pd &E activities and merge them within the roadway standard scope of services. After merging them, we look for ways to eliminate redundancies from the overlapping activities and scoping those uh, overlapping activities as either design activity or pd &E activity. Okay, so this is how pd &E activities will fit into design. So you have a preliminary design, which I provide the definition. We do a lot of a preliminary engineering pd &E. There's a lot of overlap there. So all those activities which are related to preliminary engineering will be scoped under preliminary design. And then pd &E study will continue to have um, activities related to environmental studies, alternative analysis, and preparation of environmental documents. <coughs> Look at the public involvement. We have public involvement for both pd and &E design, so we'll have public involvement for a project, and the project will have both phases, pd and &E and design. <laughs> and then combining preliminary design and, and pd and &E study will help us prepare phase two plans, and at the same time, we'll create NIPA or obtain NIPA approval. And then after that, we'll move into final design, which is preparation of construction plans. And then if we have to acquire additional right away, we can have right away acquisition phase. I will go on with um, obtaining our permits, and of course, public involvement will continue. We we'll use information from planning, including ETDM screening, as we do now, to help us scope this project. If you look at the big picture, uh, this slide here is uh, very busy, has a lot of information. <clears throat> uh, technically, it shows you some of those activities we have in the scope of services, how now they can be overlapped. Uh, specifically, showing you where pd &E activities will fit into design activities. Okay, so take a design project right now and think on where you're going to be able to do alternative screening, alternative evaluation, uh, environmental studies, and prepare a type two um, NEPA document or a SEER document. So as you can see that uh, um, the green ones here, these three activities are related to pd &E or will support pd &E. However, <clears throat> there's a lot of interrelationship between um, the design activities supporting, let's say, alternative evaluation, like conceptual drainage, preliminary roadway design, all those can help with the uh, identification of alternative and evaluation of alternatives. Um, value engineering, if uh, is needed, can be done um, concurrently with um, alternative uh, evaluation, environmental studies, and uh, um, preliminary engineering design at around the phase one plants. And then phase two plants, by the time you have phase two plants, you have to receive NEPA approval before you proceed into preparation of phase three and phase four plants. 
will be providing more guidance uh, regarding um, this uh, exhibit, exhibit uh, right here. However, the district and the consultants have flexibility in scheduling these activities. We are not dictating that these activities should be like that. For instance, the NIP approval may happen at phase one. So if the district and the consultant decide that they want to do NIP approval by completion of phase one, that is possible. What they cannot be doing is uh, NIP approval to happen, let's say, at phase four, if that is not a, um, a fear. So the district can um, schedule these uh, projects um, appropriately, depend on the concept, con context of their projects. Typical projects that can have both pd &E design combined. These are the projects with fewer environmental issues and lesser engineering complexity. Okay, so those who are doing pd &E projects now, they know that most of the, the, the projects will be uh, type 2 CE or type 2 categorical exclusion project and of course OCR will have um, an opportunity of overlapping PDNA design. The caveat is that you have to have both phases PDNA and design funded concurrently, funded together in the same year. So class of action is a type 2 OCR, you can overlap PDNA and design Roadway projects where only one build alternative is evaluated against no build alternative. Um, most of these projects will have a class of action uh, of type two. Uh, the projects that do not involve complex interchanges and intersection modifications um, can be scoped under concurrent uh, PDA design phase. And uh, most of the bridge replacement projects that do not involve construction of segmental bridges or movable span. Bridges. Also, all those uh, uh, category two bridges are not um, uh, allowed under this um, process. If a project is, a, is an EA or an EAS, also is not allowed under this uh, uh, under this process. As I said earlier, remember both PDA and design must have been programmed concurrently the same year. Final design which is a preparation of phase three and phase four, shall not start until NEPA is approved. Okay, so um, the team members um, which uh, help us with the uh, development of this system scope of services had 16 people, eight consultants, eight districts, eight with pd experience and uh, eight with design experience. We had four central office staff for production support, road design and environmental management. We met 12 different times, the team met 12 different times between February last year and February this year. We review all activities and tasks for combined scope of services. Also, we reviewed associated staff estimation guidelines. We engage in solicited feedback from central office staff, district staff, and consultant community on the proposed scope, language, and staff hour estimation guidelines. These are the team, um, the consultant efforts were led by Jeff Novotny from American, Silver Battery from Stantec, Rosemary Woods from Arkins, uh, Ray Soyce Rios from Carabino, Ben Force, DLMP, Martin McKees from HMTB, Tom Prisby, KCA, and Nick Benedicto from Tetra Tech. And then uh, the district were represented by Heather Gubert, uh, Stephen Browning, Gwen Pippin, Dart Yoon, Alina Webb, Max Jung, Diana Myers, and Suzanne Sadigi. Central Office, Bobby Boo, Marge Kabi, Ben Guerrero, and uh, myself. And of course, I want to recognize our two um, FDOT staff who started this effort and now they crossed the boundary to go to the consultant community, Martha Hudson and uh, Amy Summers. I want to thank everybody who had worked on this uh, effort. As I said, that uh, um, was a lot of work a lot of going back and forth for almost a year to finishing up with the product that we are presenting now. <clears throat> so the approach, um, we started with a scope of services for design projects. We moved and merged PDN activities that overlap in the corresponding design activities. 
Unfortunately, this works well for majority of the items, but there are well some specific items to kidney that we needed to modify. Recognize the removal of analysis through, throughout uh, major activities, and also we revise staff estimation guidelines and the forms to match the new scope language and activities. We consider carefully uh, to make sure that the hours and the work description took into account both efforts for PD&E and design. So which means that there are some of the hours which went up and some went down as a um, result of those um, margin activities. Table contents comparison, I think now you start to see how we combine uh, pretty much um, um, visually. So this is a design uh, scope of services as it is now. As I said earlier, it has about 37 sections. So we took pd and &E studies activities and merged into the design scope of services to create a combined scope. So that is a combined scope. What we did, uh, we modified the first uh, three activities on design scope of services. Uh, basically, we combine one and two to create one purpose and project description, which we have two. Then we move three to two to be project common and general task, and then we broke two to be 2A and 2B, and use three to insert pd &E related activities. So we done this for each scoping item. Of course, um, uh, eight also changed um, slightly, which is environmental permits. As you see, now we have environmental permits, compliance and clearances, or the clearance now will move into three, uh, some drainage analysis is needed to support uh, uh, pd &E, and also uh, roadway analysis also needed to support uh, pd &E, as we explain later on. So this slide here shows how pd &E activities were revised. Okay, so on the left is that existing or standalone pd and &E scope of services. On the right in how uh, those activities are scoped under concurrent pd and &E and design phase uh, um, concurrently. Uh, one and two, which is couple services and purpose and project description and objective, we are merged into one purpose and project description. Public involvement uh, was merged into public involvement, the new public involvement to be, and then engineering analysis and consideration, we are moved into 3A, preliminary engineering analysis, Four, roadway analysis, six, a drainage, seven, utilities and railroad, and 10, bridge development report. <clears throat> environmental analysis and report, uh, now will be 3B, environmental analysis and report, and of course we took noise and uh, margin to 32. Environmental document will be 3C, environmental document. How design activities were revised, and so the purpose we combine, the purpose combined with a project description now. Section two, which was a project description, we added uh, pd &E related information. And then general common task, we broke into A, and uh, which is project common and uh, general task and, and uh, to public involvement. Uh, four, which is a lot of analysis, we added, we added uh, most of the preliminary engineering tasks. Six A, we added preliminary engineering tasks. Environmental permits, we moved all environmental clearance back to pd &E tasks, which is activity three B and three C. Bridge development report, we added the preliminary engineering re related tasks. Uh, segmental concrete bridges, and then uh, movable span structures, this will not be applicable for this uh, um, project, so we remove them from the scope. However, we kept the number, so to maintain the integrity, the numbers are maintained. So the two, which is a noise barrier impact assessment, we added a pd &E noise analysis. So with all those moves, um, and um, uh, to make sure that the learning curve is not that uh, six is more gentle. We created a crosswalk tool to compare the tasks in the new scope for concurrent phases with a standard scope for design and PD&E. So we have uh, crosswalk tables for um, 
all pretty much all the activities that we combine. And those uh, tables will be made available for you uh, so that you can see how we mark them as you transition to combine those two phases. <clears throat> so this is an example of um, um, a crosswalk table for 2A, which is now common task and you know task. Um, it shows the task in the new scope, the task name, and then the notes on how we combine. If it's a straight line combine, um, we do not um, make some notes, kind of like it's obvious, or if we do not, we do not put any, any notes. So you see some notes that kind of guide you on how we um, combine them. And then towards the right, there is existing, which is um, standalone, uh, standalone scope, probably we may need to find some better naming here. So for standalone design uh, scope, uh, three, for instance, activity three corresponds to now to 2A, which is a project common task. And then if you look at the pd &E scope, that will be 2.2.8. Yeah, so if you're looking from the pd &E perspective, okay, um, go look at 2.2.8, okay, then you'll find it under 2A.1. From the design perspective, that will be three, you'll find it 2.2A.1. So we did the same for pretty much all the activities in a, in a 2A. So here I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna demonstrate um, um, how we match those two activities. Okay, so this is the, this is the, the document that we, we might actually can start from the very beginning so that you see the, the big picture. Okay, so the type and to recognize um, that there is a pd &E study and design services. Uh, some of the information were kind of like a cleaning the language as a result of the change, so uh, you know, which is a pd &E study approval, NIPA clearance of uh, other states for the project concurrent with the preparation of uh, phase two design plan. So you prepare phase two design plans with uh, pd &E at the same time. And then we added a lot of information related to pd &E, so most of these edits were related to pd &E. Modified, uh, now 1.3, we have pd &E study, uh, scope activities, all these activities um, can support activity two, three, four, six, eight, seven, ten, and the other two. I'm not gonna go into detail about this, uh, you're welcome to read them, but there they are. Uh, this one will be Okay, so I wanna go to 2A. Okay, so for uh, obtaining, and also we emphasize the date that uh, environmental document is anticipated, such that all the activities can be, the activity leading to phase two plans can be scoped to match that date. Okay, this is another uh, big change from uh, what we have now. Um, this one here has a list of uh, pretty much uh, every document or statute or regulation um, that we have to follow to prepare our project. We realize that uh, uh, we kind of have lost track of uh, some of these regulations because they change pretty much um, um, every day. So what, we, what we've done is similar to what um, uh, specification office did uh, of saying that uh, uh, the department, the consultant will prepare uh, the project must comply with all applicable uh, department manuals and guidelines. And uh, uh, we are assuming that whoever is qualified to do the job for, for us will know which guidelines they need to follow. So all, all these uh, uh, lists have been deleted because most of them were outdated. As you can see, there are four pages of uh, um, services performed by the DPD &E. and general tasks. This was taken from the design. So the name kind of saying from my three, activity three, or section three of the scope. Uh, if you want to compare, you can go to uh, section three, five, uh, to add activities related to pd &E study.
Yes, so public involvement is all uh, to be. PDNA will require preparation, preparation of community awareness plan. And that plan in design, community awareness plan or CAP has different levels. So under combined phases, we'll have only one plan, public involvement plan. That plan will be a living document and will be updated throughout PDNE and design. We'll consist of both activities to support PDNE preliminary design as well as the final design activity. So if you don't see the cap, know that the cap is the same as a public involvement plan. So all these activities uh, we are taken from, most of them were taken from PDE, and then uh, we merge the cap related uh, activities into PDE. So we pretty much covered both uh, uh, phases together. Uh, three modification letters, uh, median modification letters, all those are required by design scope. So we still have them, but now they've slightly changed the section to be 2B5, 2B6, et cetera. The meetings, we'll continue to have those meetings probably more because we may have uh, environmental related meetings. Public hearing is the same whether it's being done in design or, or so all the requirements for PDE, whether it's state requirement or federal requirement has to be has to be met as applicable. Okay, so um, presentation which is about how to combine activities as they support both PDN and design. A public involvement plan uh, include a cap for final design. We don't say cap, we just say a public involvement plan. It's all about um, involving the public, involving the agencies, involving the community. The name is going to be slightly changed from the folks who have never done PDNE, but it's going to be um, the same information as we see it right now. Okay, so I've already demonstrated that. <clears throat> then we move to 3A, which is a preliminary engineering analysis supporting uh, PDNE. And when I say supporting PDNE, means that supporting um, environmental impact analysis, alternative analysis, as well as the preparation of an EPA document and uh, um, location design concept approval of that PDNE. So these are the activities related to preliminary engineering activities. Uh, the activities are the same as what we are doing now. If you don't see that activity, know that that activity has been moved to somewhere else. <coughs> um, activity related to existing conditions, uh, previous studies, um, traffic analysis, <coughs> all those will remain to be here. However, activities related to uh, roadway analysis in PDE will be moved into section four, which is roadway analysis. That's why for most of these activities, you don't see anything on design scope. It's uh, kind of a corresponding to what we had now in the design scope. If, if an activity is missed, know that we have it somewhere else in the design scope. <laughs> Preliminary engineering analysis activities continues. <clears throat> So now I'm going to go back to the um, standard scope file to demonstrate um, how we change those. So 3A will be preliminary engineering analysis. Uh, right now it indicates everything new, but most of these are taken from PDE studies, but we show, here, we show them here as new because now they are merged into the design scope. So we're going to continue to <coughs> evaluate um, or review previous studies, uh, evaluate existing conditions, uh, prepare base maps. Uh, we will continue to do that. Methodology, collect uh, traffic count, the vehicle can obtain multimodal data, related to pedestrian, bicycle, transit, freight, <coughs> uh, speed delay studies, and then if there's micro stimulation, you have to collect uh, calibration and validation uh, data for micro simulation, um, evaluate existing operation conditions, perform calibration of the model if it's micro simulation, uh, perform a no build analysis, and then uh, um, develop and screen of alternatives. 
We need to capture that. Uh, keep in mind that we said earlier that most of the projects which uh, uh, will be following this um, uh, process will have one yield alternative. So when you come to the scope of this, pretty much you know what you're going to be doing. However, per NEPA regulation, you need to capture alternative analysis, and that alternative analysis could simply be comparison of a no build and build alternative. So, and sometimes you may need to um, tweak that alignment um, um, uh, or make some modification here and there. So this activity will continue to capture the effort associated with that. Operation evaluation of build alternative also is going to continue to be there, and then uh, we will continue to require preparation of traffic analysis report as we do now. If the project involves an uh, um, interchange, whether it's in the interstate or it's in the other freeway, you can have that interchange access request by our own guidelines. Uh, preparation of the noise uh, data, uh, traffic data for air quality traffic analysis, near late crossing. This is new. This is new. Uh, it's not available in the current uh, scope of services, but uh, there was a need uh, to have um, uh, that specializing uh, traffic analysis. Uh, tolling concept is not new. And then safety analysis is not new. We're going to continue to do like what you're doing now in a PDN study, as well as the documentation of that. So alternative evaluation will continue to be documented. And now we're going to go to, so implemental analysis and reporting uh, will be activity 3B and uh, um, uh, 3C. <coughs> 3B, implemental analysis and report. Uh, this most likely is coming from PDE. However, we took some of the activities from uh, section 8, which is uh, uh, permits and environmental clearance. So you see asbestos and metal, metal, metal base coating is coming from eight. Um, Re-evaluation of pd &E. will continue to do re-evaluation if uh, for some reason we did not do a good job on um, 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 coming up with those clearance and now in final design we'll have to make changes. Our expectation is that uh, we'll have fewer changes because you'll be able to find both two phases uh, together and hopefully construction also will be funded uh, uh, closely. So this type of re-evaluation will be minimum, not those major design change re-evaluation that we do um, most of the time right now. Okay, so going back to uh, the scope for services document, environmental analysis and report, most of this task, test text is coming from uh, pd &E scope of services. No big changes other than clarification. We realize that there are some errors in uh, um, by orders. With the quality of physical effects will continue to be like what we do now. Uh, cumulative effect the time. Cumulative effect evaluation is needed. And because of the uh, scope and scale for, of these projects, pretty much this one is not going to be needed. That's why we say this may be an option service. Uh, commitment to the court, um, you have to complete that as we require in our pd &E processes. Environmental document, it has to be one of the two, either um, uh, type 2 CE or environmental document, so you have to pick one of the other, depends on uh, um, uh, the federal nexus. Planning consistency, we'll continue to prepare planning consistency as we do now. As you will see that we just moved planning consistent from environmental analysis or engineering analysis to be, in, um, to be environmental document because it's one of the requirements for, for documentation. And then we added uh, pd and &E re-evaluation and uh, clean up our language a little bit to um, uh, clarify and focus that scope. And these are the things that uh, most likely will need to be analyzed in evaluation. So now we can move to uh, roadway analysis. 
which is uh, activity four. So uh, we made, um, I'll say, probably significant changes into roadway analysis uh, when we took uh, roadway analysis activities supporting uh, PDNE studies, uh, design controls and criteria. Uh, right now, we don't have that as a line item in the scope, but in PDNE scope of services, that is uh, 1. So 4.1 is a design control and criteria. Number one, you have to have it. You have to uh, agree with um, uh, district um, design engineers of the controls and criteria that you're going to be using. A uh, typical section, um, we broke it into uh, two sections. Uh, typical section analysis, um, uh, which is taken from 4.10.2 of PDN studies. And then the package, uh, which currently in a standalone is 4.1. PDN is for um, 18.4. So those two activities now will be under typical section. Uh, geometric design uh, is broken into three. Uh, it's the development of design options, uh, which um, must include the multi-model accommodation supporting PDNE related activities uh, from PDNE current task 1403 and 410.6. Okay, so the number now kind of come uh, together for is a PDE engineering analysis for is a roadway engineering analysis. Hopefully, you'll be able to follow and not be confused. Then uh, uh, four six two, which is horizontal vertical master five uh, four point five. Nothing has been changed there, as I'm clarifying a little bit. Uh, alternative concept plans. Um, we added that one. It's related to geometric design. That one is coming from four. 18.2 of a PDNA studies. And um, our thinking here is that um, you need to have some design options. You need to have vertical and uh, horizontal sides before you can come up with a concept plan. Okay, so move that in there uh, from PDNA. &E. We'll be capturing that. The same information that you're going to be using to develop design options, you'll be using to develop uh, uh, horizontal vertical design files at the same time you'll be able to um, prepare those concept plans that you can uh, carry with you in a public meeting, so uh, meetings with other agencies um, relevant to the project. Access management uh, from PDNE is 1405, and then design is 4.6, so we combine them together under 4.7. Uh, intersection and interchanges, um, we've added um, there, uh, sorry. We've added uh, uh, intersection and interchange concept evaluation, which we have um, um, in PDNE as 4104. Uh, roundabout, as we have now, is 4.7, um, and also in PDNE covered under 4104. 4 so now, at least, you can see how those activities were merged together. Design report um, uh, is uh, still there, but criteria we move the criteria out of the report that because now will be scoped um, as a line item as for for one and of course our cost estimates will will include um, LRE cost and the lottery cost for PDE alternative evaluation so now I'm going to be jumping into uh, the scope file to show you how roadway analysis and um, task with for one that's the new thing we added uh, design control and criteria uh, taken from PDE I streamline a little bit. Uh, typical section analysis taken also from PDE, and also typical section packages remain the same. You have to prepare that typical uh, uh, section package prior to phase one submission. Pavement type selection report, nothing changed. Other one now is 4.3. Um, design, pavement design package, nothing has changed. Uh, geometric design. Um, uh, horizontal and vertical files, we kind of like um, uh, clarify that they may have some concepts from previous studies that you need to be aware of um, while you're developing those plans. And then uh, we added alternative concept plans, overlaying alternatives that were evaluated in, in detail. Interchanges and, and uh, uh, roundabout um, evaluation the traffic count because this one a uh, traffic count from activity 3a so that was a redundancy over there and if you have to go collect a pedestrian volume uh, posted speed limit uh, delay counts all those are part of a uh, 
traffic study, <coughs> uh, temperate control plants analysis. We clarify uh, the amount of work which um, we needed from the uh, environmental clearance uh, perspective. Um, uh, you will need to have um, some of our uh, alternatives. So uh, keep in mind that we're on five. Uh, we can continue to do what we're doing in five at the same time. Everything we're doing now in five will support um, PDME efforts. So 6A uh, changed um, uh, pretty much um, uh, significantly, but not that significant. What does that mean? Okay, this is the area where we saw a lot of repetition. Okay, many of you who are drainage engineers, uh, you are aware of that we do point sitting analysis in PDME. And then uh, during design, everything is thrown away. We start over again. So the point sitting analysis is going to be done once, and it's going to be supporting uh, environmental clearance at the same time supporting preparation of our final plan. So that's why you see a lot of overlap from um, uh, pretty much all the columns that are covered. Drainage map hydrology, <clears throat> base clearance and calculation. I believe we added end report. Uh, previously, we did not have report. Uh, we are required to prepare a base clearance calculation report. So it will be both analysis and reporting. Corresponding uh, task for that is uh, 4.14.2. Point sitting analysis and report. Um, we have we have now in the same area, but we've added the information from PDME, which is 414.4. Now I'm going to be moving to show you how that significant changes has changed, not that significant, confusing you. So. Okay, so the roadway plans for this case, the roadway plans uh, did not change because we're going to continue to prepare the plans, phase one plans, phase two plans, as we've done that. Those ones will not be affected by combining environmental um, and, uh, and uh, design. So 6A, like a drainage map hydrology, which we are doing in PD&E and design, we are repeating it. So nothing has been changed over there. This is what uh, this is an example where I say that you see a lot of overlap, but literally we're doing the same thing two times. There's clearance calculation and report, so we added that report over there, and then some uh, clarification was added in the scope language. Uh, point sitting analysis and report. Um, um, most of this uh, emph language emphasizes um, me. Uh, you see um, environmental look around there. If I um, did not in, um, come up with any regional point opportunities, design of course, drain, ditches, storm, nothing significant change, similar type of thing. Flood plain and environmental permit drainage data collection. We kind of like emphasize on what um, needs to be done there. To location hydraulics report, um, any perspective of PDE documentation. We had it there, uh, bridge hydraulics. We clarify some language on um, bridge hydraulics report. Of course, as I say, drainage plans will not change since uh, we're going to be continuing to prepare drainage plans as we've done in the past. So come section eight, um, which um, the uh, environmental clearance or reevaluation and put it back to where it belongs right now under 3C. As you see that there is no PDE tax related information, but when I was discussing 3C, you saw that there are some of the activity which came from, from eight. So I'm going to be going back to the standard scope of services to show you 
8. So we change the title to be just environmental permits. And then the permits now will be identified in section 1.6 and also uh, section uh, 3B. So the, the idea here is uh, most of the data that we analysis will hopefully be current and able to support environmental permit application. So we're not going to be doing uh, two times. If we do it at the appropriate time of the year, we're going to be doing only one. So the update is not going to be as significant as we do now. So for instance, here we say this survey was, was completed under task 3B, 1 then the consultant should update this survey as necessary to prepare this permit application to appropriate agencies. And um, assuming that this now is going to be done um, past uh, phase two plans. So in phase uh, one or somewhere between one and two, we collect that information. And the concern task will be just to update those surveys. And then if they're still current, then they cannot do anything on that update. Or the report is that the species are survey is current. <laughs> So um, 8.13, which is related to environmental clearance, the evaluation and technical support. This one now is moved into 3C, pd &E, the evaluation. And pretty much everything that is needed there. And as I said earlier, if we do this correctly, most likely we will have uh, fewer design change evaluation and fewer um, um, the evaluation, we can proceed quicker to construction. Our guidelines say um, you can move to a uh, lateral phase within one year of a LODCA. Um, even construction, if it's within one year, talk to our office, then uh, uh, we can clear that environmental reevaluation quicker than we do now for those PDNE which has been the shelf for many years. So structure change there other than um, a little uh, clarification. Uh, the biggest change now comes into 10. Into 10 bridge development report, BDR. What we did was to add a preliminary concept uh, development information from PDE into activity 10. Much of the information, again, there's a lot of um, overlap there. Then if we have a long span concrete, uh, those segmental bridge, or we have a movable span, those are not um, applicable. Uh, we will uh, not um, procure a contract that has a long span concrete and overlap both PDNA design. And if somebody is asking why that is the direction that we have from structures office, these bridges are very complicated and they require a lot of um, uh, analysis uh, of their concept. So uh, they believe that um, uh, even if the class of action is type two, um, they need to be more involved and probably it's not the right time to consider overlapping pd design for those type of uh, projects. Until they come back and tell us otherwise, we are not gonna be overlapping pd design for long span con concrete bridges as well as the movable span bridges. <clears throat> okay, so segmental concrete bridge and movable span structures those are um, removed. However, we'll be keeping those section numbers 15 and 16. You have uh, a text which says segment segmental concrete bridge is not applicable to this scope and movable span structures are not applicable to this scope or something like that. Okay, so before I go to noise, I will show you the structures, what will change in structures, 10. So this is 10. Uh, we clarify uh, the language regarding preparation of a BDR. 
bridge geometry. Uh, we talk about the concept uh, for vertical and horizontal, um, mainly coming from the pd &E scope of services. Uh, typical sections, options for the bridges. And then uh, everything and the movable span uh, or applicable for this. So we kind of like a remote plan. Temporary bridge, no change. A short span concrete bridge, no change. Medium span concrete bridge, no change, which means that all these type of projects can be procured in one contract with both pd and &E design combined. So team structure steel bridge, no change. Deleted all the activity, keep by they are deleted. Then hap happens to 16. Then from 16 to 31, significantly, other than very little uh, clarification here and there, which I'm not going to be discussing with you. The biggest change that we've done is noise. And stop noise. The um, effort in pd &E. At the same time, we do another re-evaluation during design. Why? Because the data may be outdated. So we have to do so and that will go away because we'll be able to DNA design. And then noise analysis will support both PDE evaluation and design plans preparation. Okay. And to be noise analysis will com comprise of noise study, um, mainly from PDE to support uh, um, um, development of uh, reasonable and feasible or determination of um, uh, reasonable and feasible noise abatement barriers. And then uh, 32.2, which is a noise barrier evaluation, we have to do this past 60% design plans if uh, we miss um, some uh, building permits between we completed, we completed the noise study and um, the NEPA approved, the NEPA document was approved. So that's the federal regulation 23 um, CFR 772 require us to do that. We'll continue to do that. As I said earlier, pretty much um, most of the time, this evaluation will be a formality, but we have to include it in the scope just in case that um, there's a, um, a house or a subdivision which has been permitted, but we did not capture it. Um, during preparation of um, noise type to support um, environmental documents. So 32.2 all the way to 32.9, uh, the same as what we have now. Now I'm going to go back to show you how we change that. But the noise uh, being changed. Uh, this is uh, the first one, and okay. So with all those changes, now comes uh, the biggest part, which I think is most interest to um, a lot of people: uh, the project managers on either side of uh, of the table, uh, be uh, department project managers or consultant project managers. They need to have some guidance on how um, those combined activities will be. Um, um, negotiated, the hours for uh, doing those activities be negotiated. So we created staff hours mates and um, guidelines for those combined tasks. I'm going to be sharing with you that uh, in a minute. We considered um, um, the hour range and work description um, and taking into account the efforts that support both pd and design and the overlapping uh, activities, um, the things that we added more, the things that we reduced more. As a result, uh, some hours have increased, some hours have decreased, some hours remain unchanged, some guidelines have slightly changed because of the changes in the scope language. 
So I'll use the next uh, uh, 10 minutes to go over, or maybe less than 10 minutes to go over staff our estimation data to show you what we've changed. <clears throat> so throughout the change, our reasoning behind all those changes. Okay, so introduction, uh, we added um, that uh, activities 15 and 16 will not be applicable for concurrent PDNA design projects. So you have to be aware of that. <clears throat> what we want to do with this project, that's how we're going to be mitigating or managing risk on this type of the project. Who knows, after 10 years or 20 years, uh, now we become charging these activities. Um, um, what I'm saying now may not matter. You may be asked to do pretty much no projects. But now EA, EISs don't do that. Uh, segmental bridges, movable span bridges, um, don't do that. If you think you really think that you can do that, talk to structures office, they'll um, give that exception, not our office. It's a design problem than environmental problem. Okay, so um, <clears throat> 2A, which area to clarify. Okay, so these are the notes that um, uh, we added um, on the reasoning behind the, the changes in the hours. You will see that uh, it's the new information because Excel does not have track changes, but you kind of like flag them with the red and then um, strike through is the text that we, we, we removed. Uh, for instance, uh, this um, uh, related to risk is uh, uh, there will be one risk assessment workshop. And then if you have two or more, you have to multiply by the number of um, workshops um, appropriately. So that's a negotiation um, element. Then you go to pubbing, uh, for instance, a comment and coordination. We have the range of 24 to 80, um, but you may need to have an addendum um, prepared to that coordination report dealing design. Um, since uh, uh, you have pretty much all the information, we've added half of the original range for the addenda. So instead of adding twice or double the hours, it's kind of like you have all the information. So we um, agree as a team, and this is not Victor, we agree on the team that the team of uh, 16 people I showed you earlier, we agreed on um, pretty much all of these changes. There may be some um, uh, information here kind of like not complete uh, because um, our production support office and the leadership of uh, Bobby Boo, um, he's uh, working on um, um, changing some of um, the guidelines on the scope of services and um, staff estimation um, side, which may impact here. So at some point we have to come and uh, uh, reconcile the two documents uh, to finishing that one up. Uh, he's gonna come back and, and share with you either today or uh, see him in a design um, expo June. So we provide some, some guidance on the side um, to help you understand how we see that we kind of change the guidelines for roadway <coughs> analysis. Um, the guidance which we have for the big scope for standalone PDNA pd studies has all these um, minor projects with surfacing, um, intersection improvements, uh, so we removed that one because now we are concentrating on PDE projects and resurfacing. They don't have PDE projects, uh, so we have to come up with uh, what is a below range project, what is the lower end of range, what is the mid range, and what is the upper range. So all these guidance will help you uh, kind of like understand where we are um, with those ranges um, on the design, and also they can be used in other. Um, activities. So, uh, 4 to 1 typical section analysis, uh, we added 4 to 12 hours instead of saying see just um, guidelines. So, we kind of discuss and agree those are the hours for each typical section. You can analyze most of the typical section as standard. Um, you can start off the um, FBM and then modify that. And um, um, why did we change or why do we leave um, these as? The year round about um, evaluation. I think this one is recently changed to 80, I believe. So, in our last week of uh, um, the task team for running their working on. 
So uh, we're going to be monitoring that whenever the changes we have. We're going to be coming in uh, and um, change that. So these are the changes that we've made to boundary uh, uh, environmental permits. Um, the same, uh, we kind of like remove them. Um, so these are the strike through, stricken through. Then and uh, uh, you see that um, it's, it's here, but we don't expect it to to be used anyway because it has to be in the scope for this one to to work. But in the first page, we added a qualification that this one is not applicable, although it's here. But we have to hold it just in case that somebody comes and say, okay, now you got exception, uh, you can use it. Now you have it to to use it. Um, so those are the changes, and the forms were updated accordingly. I'm not going to go much into that. So uh, the last part of the presentation, uh, very quick, um, there's a lot of tools and guidance needed to um, help um, you um, uh, preposition yourself um, uh, to do PDE and design phases combined. Uh, one of the most uh, important things is going to be for our own department staff to make sure that uh, they program PDE and design uh, scope of services. I mean, scope projects. Um, program project together, so fund uh, PDE and design in one year, so that they can be included in one project there. Um, with that, they may require changes in the work program instructions. Uh, we're going to be working with those um, um, uh, later on. Um, uh, we may need to go back to PDE manual, clarify on some of the things, and also we may need to go to FDM and clarify some of the languages um, in there. I know there's a chapter, chapter on uh, initial engineering, which is more or less um, a preliminary um, engineering design. We may need to go there and um, um, add some clarification on these projects which are overlapping pd and &E design. Uh, pretty much the most um, uh, tools that you need to negotiate the, uh, the projects with created them now, they're available for use um, as they are right now. So scope of services and staff estimation guidelines. Most of the presentation in the past nine, 90 minutes um, was related to scope of services and staff estimation guidelines. <coughs> Hopefully I did not confuse you too much. And then if I confuse you too much, please feel free to reach out to me or Bobby. We should be able to provide that clarification. What I'm emphasizing now again is that um, you have one project which has both PDE and design phase combined. Okay, it's not going to have that PDE project with an option for design. I know a lot of you have done those and you think that you're a champion of um, doing PDE and design combined. No, you're not. There are very few projects which are combined, real combined PDE and design projects. That area, those projects were coined SWAT projects. And we no longer have those SWAT projects, although there are some of them still going on. If you combine PDN and design, it is a project. It's not, we're not going to be calling it a SWAT project. We're going to be calling it a project with both, both two phases combined. And then you have the web program giving you money for both two phases. Understand, I'm repeating that a lot because our mindset now has to change that for this type of the project, I'll have both two phases combined. Um, then uh, uh, we developed a user quick guide. I'm going to be showing a snapshot of that. And uh, this is kind of like a four page document. I was um, joking the other day that uh, nowadays, if you go buy a television, uh, it comes up with a, a brochure uh, showing you that this is how you're going to be able to run your television. So, one of the days that you have a, a, a handbook with uh, 50 pages or 100 pages on how to turn the television, change the channels, and, and things like that. So we kind of like took the similar approach and um, summarized pretty much everything that I've, I've talked today in a, a, user, a quick user guide for pages. Um, it's going to show you how we prepare the standard scope of services for uh, pd and and design. So I've already talked about um, revisions in our procedures and manuals, which are forthcoming. <coughs> um, uh, procurement procedures, I think that was one of the questions that um, design 
uh, is a lump sum and PDE is a limiting amount. You cannot combine the two. I talked to uh, procurement office. They say that you can do that. You can combine um, a lump sum um, items with um, limiting amount items. They gave me an example of a geotechnical investigation uh, with a design project. It's not a lump sum. So there we don't have the project, the problem um, uh, doing this type of the project. As I said, it's not the new thing. It has been done here. Pretty much every district have done at least one project which combined both pd and design and um, the SWAT initiative. <clears throat> so the quick guide, the quick guide, uh, this is the um, look and feel of the quick guide. It has four pages. Um, do not show the second page, so the first page, the third page, and the fourth page. Now you're kind of familiar of, um, of these exhibits because I discuss um, um, these exhibits with you. The second page mainly tells you that if you want to scope um, this project, make sure that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All those are activities. So to manage those risks, um, uh, you have to make sure that you have them. Help us, um, uh, um, department um, uh, project managers, when they are scoping those projects. At the same time, uh, the consultant, when they are prepositioned for those projects, uh, they can ask the right questions. Uh, if uh, the department say, hey, we can over beginning and design. Okay, so the other thing that we're working right now, this is gonna be a big, it's gonna be a, a developing, we are developing scheduling template, templates uh, with a standardized task with a PSM course. PSM is a project um, schedule management, uh, yeah, management um, course in uh, Primavera. Um, this work is uh, ongoing right now. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be completed in June, um, but um, keep it posted. Uh, we'll keep you posted when um, that one is being done. Having no schedule does not um, prevent you from um, um, doing one of these projects. As a matter of fact, I told you that uh, um, the process is flexible, so we don't wanna limit you to whatever the template we give. The template is gonna be an initial starting point uh, with a major milestone, like you have to know that if you have to approve NEPA, um, um, you need uh, how many days um, uh, with the district review, center office review, with um, um, our director review before he can approve NEPA documents. So we're gonna be attaching those uh, uh, um, uh, days and, and timelines in there and provide more guidance on, on that. So there's a lot of uh, going on and hopefully I will um, continue to keep you posted on the things that we are going on. Now I'm gonna be transitioned to Bobby Go. Great job, Victor. Hour and a half, that was awesome. Very good, thank you. Okay, uh, just to let everybody know that uh, Victor just said that we're gonna have uh, these documents available. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be posting this information on our Scope of Services webpage and within Learning Curve. That will include a PDF of the presentation. Uh, the uh, video of the presentation, the quick guide, and any other documents. Uh, as Victor said, we have a design scope of services update coming out in the next few weeks. What we'll do is we'll take the doc our document and incorporate it into this one. So we'll need to do some uh, massaging there to make sure that the language is correct and we're placing in the right place. Using that crosswalk to make sure everything's being uh, done properly. Uh, when we do get all these final documents posted, they will all be located within the office design, production support, project management page, the current design, uh, scope of services page, which includes the PD&E documents, the design scope of documents, and we'll create a space on that page for the combined documents as well. If you have any questions, you have our contact information, feel free to, like I said, Victor, to contact uh, one of us and we will be able to uh, follow up with you. All of the questions and answers that were also, uh, that came in through the board, we're going to provide those uh, as far as FAQs that, uh, on that page as well. So I think we'll have everything covered. So if there's anything on the additional follow-up, let us know. Uh, Victor, I think we're all set. We appreciate, appreciate y'all's time today and feel free to contact us. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.